Hi everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week video for gold for the trading week ending Friday 24th of May. Gold again is range bound with the resistance about 13.10 and support about 12.65. A downward breakout still looks more likely than upward. If price does break below support, the target is at 1219. However, if we see an upward breakout, the target is at 1346. This is my preferred Elliott Wave count because it follows the most common Elliott Wave pattern which is unfolded in the most common way. The basic Elliott Wave structure is five steps forward followed by three steps back. For gold, I am seeing five steps forward complete at the all-time high, I think that was September 2011, now followed by an incomplete three steps back labelled A, B, C at cycle degree. My wave counts are seeing, my first two, or three actually, are seeing cycle wave A over here. This wave count sees cycle wave B over here as a regular contracting triangle. That's one of the more common structures for a B wave and this triangle is the most common type of triangle and it's unfolded in the most common way. An Elliott wave triangle has five subwaves and Elliott wave corrective patterns are always labelled with letters, not numbers, and so we label a triangle A, B, C, D, E. One of the five subwaves of a triangle should subdivide as a multiple, usually a double zigzag, and it's wave C which most commonly does so. Here, this is a double zigzag for wave C, following the most common pattern. The most common point for wave E of a contracting triangle to end is to fall short a little of the AC trend line. It looks like wave E has ended here, falling short of the AC trend line. My only concern now, and it's been a concern developing for the last few weeks, is that cycle wave C is not showing an increase in strength. When Elliott wave triangles are complete, then the following movement usually quite quickly begins to develop some pretty good strength. Here's an Elliott wave triangle, the movement out of it is a strong movement in the same direction as price entered the triangle, because Elliott wave triangles are always continuation patterns, unlike classic analysis triangles which can also be reversal patterns. This downward movement is not developing strength, ATR is continuing to decline, giving me some concern now for this wave count, I have a couple of alternates which would explain that. Let's look at the daily chart level where cycle B, the high up here, cycle wave C must subdivide as a five wave structure and I am going to label primary wave 1 within it incomplete, subdividing as an impulse. Primary wave 1, the next fractal down is intermediate degree, has intermediate 1, 2 and 3 incomplete, within intermediate wave 3, minor wave 3 may only subdivide as an impulse. Minor wave 1, 2 may be over, and now minor wave 3 may be in its early stages. Within minor wave 3, minute waves 1 and 2 may be over, and minute 3 may be in its early stages. And so this wave count now sees a third wave beginning at 1, 2 and 3 degrees. This wave count expects to see an increase in downward momentum, and one or more of these third waves may possibly end with selling climaxes because gold typical of commodities exhibits swift strong fifth waves and that tendency is especially prevalent for its fifth waves to end its third wave impulses so we'll look out for that possibility in coming weeks. The target for minor wave 3 is for it to reach 1.618 the length of 1 but if that target is wrong for this wave count it may not be low enough. If minute 2 continues further sideways next week, it may not move beyond the start of 1. Now I know that the spike here on bar chart data does not appear on other data feeds, but gold is a truly global market, and no two data feeds are always going to be the same. I know this is wildly different to other data feeds, but I have to consider it as part of the Elliott wave count. This is a tendency of this bar chart data feed for this market. It doesn't mean it's wrong, it just means it's different 
to other data feeds. No data feed is going to include every single smaller market for this truly global market of gold. So there will be differences and I cannot cherry pick which highs and lows I consider and which I ignore. So I must include it as the part of the wave count and over the years I have learned that it will fit and it will all work out in the end. Let's take a look at the hourly chart where the high for two is the spike up here. If I was going to try and ignore these data spikes, which ones should I ignore? Should I ignore this one? But should I include this one or should I ignore this one? You see there's a problem. If I start to try and cherry pick which candlesticks and highs and lows I'm going to include in my wave count. I have to include and be consistent including all of this data. If my new 2 is over here, then my new 3 may only subdivide as an impulse. 1 and 2 at minuet degree may be incomplete to move beyond the end of microwave 3, so micro 5 avoids a truncation. When that's done, this wave count at lower time frames also expects another third wave may begin, and so at 5 degrees we may be seeing, sorry, at 4 degrees we may be seeing a third wave down beginning next week. Minuet 2 may not move beyond the start of Minuet 1 above this price point. This is a short term invalidation point. At the weekly chart level, this wave count is identical to the first one up to this point here. And now, instead of seeing cycle B over here, what if it's not complete? What if primary wave E is still continuing a little higher? Subdividing as a zigzag 5, 3, 5. This would explain some weakness in this downward movement. B waves should exhibit weakness. And so this does fit with more recent ATR declining in classic technical analysis. For this idea, intermediate C would be expected to move at least slightly above the end of intermediate wave A to avoid a truncation. Truncations are not common occurrences for this market. A truncation usually comes after a movement that was too far, too fast, and I would not categorise the end of intermediate wave A up here as too far, too fast. Truncations usually for this market are seen for fifth waves ending really strong, sorry, coming after really strong third wave impulses. That's not the case here. So this wave count expects a new high above this point, but primary wave E may not move beyond the end of C above the invalidation point. For this wave count, the invalidation point is absolutely black and white. Any amount at any time frame, even a fraction of a cent on a tick chart, is enough to invalidate this alternate wave count. Draw a channel around this upward movement from the start of A to the end of B, and then place a copy on the end of A. Gold's movements do not always fit well within trend channels, but when we see the channels not adhered to, it's usually in the early part of a movement, not this late in a trend. The overshoot of this channel here and breach at the daily overshoot at the weekly and breach at the daily chart level makes me consider this wave count may not be correct. Let's take a look at the daily chart level where A has ended here. Here's B and here's an overshoot with a full daily candlestick below and not touching the lower trend line. That's my definition of an overshoot of the lower edge of this channel, giving cause for concern for this wave count. However, it's technically valid. If B is over here, then intermediate C to complete the zigzag for primary E must subdivide as a five wave structure at minor degree. So far there may be minor one, 2 and minor 3 incomplete. Here is the target for it. After we see an upward breakout above resistance, which is about 1300 to 1310, this will be the short term target for this wave count. We can have confidence with this wave count next week if we see a new high above the confidence point because then the first chart would be invalidated. At the hourly chart level, Here's the end of minute 1 and 2. This wave count now expects a third wave up at 4 degrees, maybe beginning and in its early stages to continue next week. And so this wave count expects after an upward breakout, quite strong upward movement. 
At the weekly chart level, this is quite a different wave count to the first two. Now I'm considering what if cycle wave B is not over? What if it's not unfolding as a triangle? Too many times over the years I have labelled an Elliott wave triangle complete or nearly complete only for the wave count to be invalidated and the structure turns out to be something else. Elliott wave triangles are quite tricky structures so it's always important when you're working with the possibility of one to always consider an alternate. Here I'm considering a possible double zigzag. The first zigzag in the double may be complete here, labelled primary W. The double may be joined by an incomplete corrective structure in the opposite direction, labelled primary X. And then a second zigzag for primary wave Y would then be expected to move substantially higher, to move reasonably or substantially above the end of primary W, because the purpose of a second zigzag in a double is to deepen a correction when a first zigzag does not move price deep enough. But this wave count does not follow as common a pattern. Double zigzags are quite common, but the problem here is primary wave X. X waves within double zigzags and double combinations actually, which are rarer, but X waves within double zigzags are almost always themselves single zigzags. They can be any corrective structure, including a multiple, and occasionally they can be triangles. This isn't very rare, but it's certainly not common, whereas my first wave count does follow a very common pattern. And so on that basis, on common or not common structures, I have to judge this wave count to have a lower probability. Within primary X, subdividing possibly as a triangle labelled A, B, C, D, E, it's wave B which may have subdivided as a double zigzag, more complicated multiple. It's usually wave C that does that, but it doesn't have to be. It can sometimes be waves B or D, although it can be any triangle subwave. And so this does not follow the most common pattern. For this wave count, I'd be expecting D may be incomplete, subdividing 5, 3, 5 as a zigzag to end at the BD trend line which I've drawn across these two highs and extended on out to here. And finally, the last wave count with the lowest probability, I'm presenting my weekly charts in order of probability. The lowest probability wave count is the possibility that the big three steps back was actually over at the low in December 2015 and that gold has been basing action for the last few years and is within the early stages relatively of a new bull market. If gold is in a new bull market, then a new bull market for Elliott Wave has to subdivide for the first movement as a five wave structure. There are only two possible structural options for a first wave, either a five wave impulse, which is much, much more common, or a five wave leading diagonal, which is not a common structure, not rare, but fairly uncommon. There is not enough overlapping, this is very, very obviously not a diagonal, it will not fit the rules for a leading diagonal, but it could be made to fit the rules for a five wave impulse. But here's the problem, I've gone over this before, I'll do it again for those of you who are new here. The problem here is the proportion of primary waves 4 to 2. Gold, typical of commodities, exhibits swift, strong fifth waves, and it has that tendency particularly evident in its third wave impulses. If we look at the subdivisions here within minor wave 3, it subdivides as a five wave impulse, and the fifth wave down here is swift and strong, forcing the fourth wave that comes just after and the little one in here just before to be more brief and shallow, than its counterpart second wave is. That gives gold's impulses on higher time frames a three wave look. From the start of the impulse to the end of it here, this looks like a three wave structure, but it's actually a five. This is really typical behavior for gold. What's extremely uncommon is for the fourth and second waves to be disproportionate the other way round. Here, primary wave 4 covers a much, much greater distance in terms of price and is much longer in terms of time 
than primary wave 2. This does not look right. Trying to see this movement up here as a 5 wave impulse is highly problematic, does not follow normal behaviour for this market. It is technically possible, it just has a really low probability. And the other problem now is if this is the end of a second wave at cycle degree and the start of a third wave at cycle degree, it should be beginning to show quite a lot of strength. Third waves should be unmistakable. They should develop strength particularly toward the middle and at the end of a third wave they are often explosive. The first waves within them don't have to exhibit a lot of strength, but they almost always do. They can actually start out quite quickly. This one absolutely doesn't. Declining ATR for many, many weeks now continues to show continuing weakness within this market. Here, primary two may not move beyond the start of one. A new low by any amount at any time frame, even a fraction of a cent on a tick chart fully invalidates this wave count and that's one reason why if we see a new low below this time this price point I will have such confidence in my main Elliott wave count. Let's look at some classic technical analysis now. This week has closed with a lower low and a lower high but the balance of volume with is upward and the candlestick has closed green. There's also a bullish long lower wick. This suggests we may be about to see more upward movement early next week. I will expect a little bounce. However, the bigger picture still sees a high in place here as quite likely. From this low there was a series of higher highs and higher lows. That is the basic definition of an upward trend. But on this week here, we saw a lower low, and here we've seen another lower low. So now below the last two swing lows and within the upward trend, we now have swing lows breaking below those. From this high, we now have a series of one, two, three lower highs, and one, two lower lows, suggesting that there may have been a trend change here, supported by two bearish candlestick patterns, a shooting star at the high followed immediately by a bearish engulfing pattern. And so it looks like there may be a high in place for gold. Downward movement has some push from volume actively pushing price lower. However, ATR continues to decline. This supports the alternate Elliott wave counts. It supports the first alternate and it supports the double zigzag. It does not support the last alternate which sees gold in a bull market and it now doesn't support the main wave count either. This is of concern for that main wave count. While the last swing high remains intact it would be safest to assume that there may be a new downward trend in place. Although ADX has not yet caught up with that, it's still declining, telling us there may not yet be a trend. The negative DX line still remains below the positive as well, with all of this time-consuming bounces within the downward trend. Watch on balance volume carefully next week. It has a new short-term range. A break above resistance would be a bullish signal. A break below support would be a bearish signal. RSI is neutral, there's plenty of room for price to fall. This trend is not yet or this possible trend is not yet extreme. Stochastics is oversold, it can remain there for reasonable periods of time before we see a turn in price. It is not particularly use, useful as a timing tool. MACD is bearish but remains above the zero line, so not full ball bearish. Overall, this chart is bearish to neutral. The short term picture sees gold still with a lower high and this series of lower lows, although we haven't yet made a lower low below this point here. While this last swing high remains intact, it would be safest to assume that the downward trend probably remains intact, although for the very short term, at the daily chart level also ADX is declining, telling us that at this time frame, at this time, there is no clear trend. Thursday's strong upward movement came with strong support from volume. That may need to be followed by a little bit more upward movement before this upward bounce is complete.
and there is support about 1260, 1265, resistance now about 1305. We need to see an upward breakout or a downward breakout to have some confidence in the next price direction. Here's a shorter term range for on balance volume. Let's watch to see a break above resistance or below support to see a signal either way. RSI is neutral, plenty of room for price to rise or fall. We've been over ADX, we've been over ATR. Stochastics returning back into neutral territory. And MACD bearish, but not fully so, because the lower, shorter line is now, now has a positive slope. That's all from me with your gold analysis. I hope all our members are having an awesome weekend.